Mac, am I on? Check, check, check. There we are. There we are. Very good. Amen. God is good. Amen. Thank you, Sean. Hey, I, I mentioned this last week, but they were not here. And since we're all here, I want to give a big happy 40th anniversary to Dave and Connie LeFaver. Happy 40th anniversary to you two. <laughs> Feels like it's been like five years, doesn't it, Dave? Isn't it amazing how fast it goes? Six years. Six years. <laughs> it does, though. It goes like this. It's like suddenly you are. <laughs> you guys are doing fine. You guys are doing fine. <laughs> Oh man, well it's it's a happy happy 40th anniversary for sure. And I want to take a moment. I know he's watching right now and uh, pray for Don Colbert this morning. And uh, he sent me a text here. Let me, I should read what that text says if I find my. I, I love this. We, during that moment of Thanksgiving, uh, Don sent this. He said, "Morning, Ben. We are watching. So thankful for the Church of God. <laughs> so uh, uh, that's a." Uh, a good, uh, a good uh, testimony. I think, uh, I think Don goes again in tomorrow. He's got regular chemo t- tomorrow, right, Deanna? Is that right? He had a rough chemo two weeks ago, um, but tomorrow he goes in again. Let's pray for Don. And again, the, the, yeah, let's just pray for continued miracles. Father, I lift up Don Colbert to you today. Lord, I thank you for him, Lord, as he's home watching right now. Lord, I'm, we're thankful for him. We're thankful for the testimony, uh, Lord, of, of a man who loves Jesus, uh, Lord, no matter what. Uh, Lord, he's pressing forward for the things of God. And Lord, I pray you touch him, you heal him, give him strength. I pray specifically for him tomorrow, Lord, as he goes in, Lord, for treatment. And this week, uh, Lord, he'd be strengthened in the Lord, uh, strengthened in his innermost being, we pray. Touch him and heal him in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's one of those Sundays where I feel like I have like three different things to say. You know, we're going to be, we're talking about a culture of the kingdom. I don't know, oh, that didn't make it over, over to me. I'm going to make that, I'm going to make it over to me because I like to look back at that. I, uh, the, uh whoops, whoa, close. Oh, uh, and <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Benny, you can throw that slide up there, culture of the kingdom. I think that's the first slide there. The culture of the kingdom. We started talking about that last week. If, if you were here last week, I was mentioning how we were at a, we were at a worship practice one night, and uh, I was trying to encourage the worship team, like, hey, guys, let's, you know, we really got to get some culture in our worship. And, and I was talking about different cultures and different churches I had been at over the years, and Praise the Lord. I, I'm just grateful that I've been able to worship with so many different people of different places. And that's a blessing of the Lord. And uh, as I mentioned, I was just talking about that. And Danica, uh, she said, uh, hey, can I share something? I said, yeah. She goes, I feel, like, I feel like it's not just, it's not that we're looking for other cultures. It's that there's a culture of the kingdom that we get to get in on. It's not that we got to find like little pieces of all this different stuff that we like, oh, I like that song or I like that form or I like this thing. No, it's like there's a culture of the kingdom that God wants us to step into and be about and be a part of. And man, when, when, when she spoke that, I'm telling you, it became, it's been resonating in my heart, uh, in my heart. And I hope that even through these messages as we teach and preach uh, uh, some topical studies of things like we're going to be t- studying worship and praise today. And next week we'll wrap that up and then we'll move on to other things, marriage, we'll talk about family, we'll talk about parenting. I mean, my heart is is that we can talk about what is the culture of the kingdom? What does it look like, kingdom culture in my marriage? What does kingdom culture look like in my job? What does it look like in my family? And uh, certainly dive into those things. I think it's very important. But I mentioned there's a few things I want to say. I feel like there's three things I want to say. I'll get back to the worship and praise part. Uh, First, I want to, the first thing I want to say this morning is... uh, at the beginning of the year, who was here for our, our evening uh, prayer meeting, our prayer meeting at the beginning of the year? Who was, who was able to make it out? What a fantastic, it was a fantastic meeting that night. I actually was running late that night. I was with David and I were over with, uh, with uh, Larry and Diane over in the hospital. Um, but uh, I came late, but when I arrived, it was just like a real significant time of prayer ministry. And... Uh, a lot of things were said, a lot of personal things to me were encouraging to me, it was helpful and different things. But one thing that I want to remind the church of, I felt like this, uh, you know, even Kayla and I were talking last night, we were just talking about 
the importance of this scripture for us. And it's found in Judges chapter 6. I'm not going to go back to the book of Judges. We studied that through the fall. We had a fun study of that. But Judges chapter 6 was a word that uh, Jen Haas had uh, for me. And then Pastor Rick had been, was up. He was like amening the word as it was coming forth. And he said, I'll tell you what, that verse, that chapter was on my heart, he said. And Ben, he goes, I, I encourage you in the entire body at CFC Madrid to be reading and studying that chapter out. Now, I don't know if anybody remembered that. This is a reminder to us uh, to look at it again, to, to refresh ourselves over Judges chapter 6. And I, I personally, I've read it maybe, I would say maybe five times myself over the last three weeks. That's it. I mean, it's like I've given to myself like five times. But my wife, bless her heart, she listens to it every day. She's just putting the scripture in front of her. And it's, it's this scripture that I think is important for us prophetically as a church because God has work that he wants to do in us and through us, and he doesn't want us to become discouraged with little old me or little old us. He wants us to know who we are. I feel like that's even what the Lord is spoken, speaking, excuse me, spoken, <laughs> spoken this morning during the service. The Lord is reminding us who we are, who we are. And he did that with, with Gideon. I'm going to read it just for us, and this is just an encouragement to us. Now the angel of the Lord came, and this is a, uh, Judges chapter 6. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth at Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abizrite, while his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. And I feel like the encouragement to the body of Christ here at CFC Madrid is that. The Lord is with you, O mighty body of valor, right? O mighty man. Almighty men and women of valor, the Lord is with you. And Gideon said to him, this is an interesting, uh, interesting little scripture here. It says, please, Lord, please, sir. That's what he says, please, sir. If the Lord is with us, then why has all this happened to us? And where are all his wonderful deeds that our fathers recounted to us, saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and given us into the hand of Midian. What do we have? The response of Gideon right away. By the way, I'm not preaching on this. I just want to exhort us in this, but I'm going to preach a little bit. The, the response of Gideon is, if the Lord is with me, almighty man of valor, then where is the Lord? Where are his wonderful deeds? What's going on here? What's going on with this situation? Debbie, you were sharing, even in your sharing, uh, you know, in the midst of difficult times. It's going to touch on stuff I'm going to preach on today, uh, you know, of worship. But it's this thing of... Um, you know, Lord, where were you? And, and we can get caught up with, where are you, Lord, right now? Where I remember what you did, and if, since you're not doing it that way, then, then that must mean that today you're not doing anything. No, no, no. I'm right here in front of you, Gideon, calling you to step up, to step in to the plan that I have and the purpose that I have. So listen, so he said, the Lord turned to him, because now it's the, it's the Lord, <laughs> the Lord turned to him. Please, sir, if the Lord is with us, and where was he? Where, where are these wonderful deeds? I'm standing right in front of you, Gideon. Sometimes we look for, you know, we, we, want, we want to see this great thing, and it's like the Lord saying, I'm here right now equipping and empowering you to walk out your purpose. He said, the Lord turned to him and said, go in this might of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Do not I send you. And he said to him, please, Lord, how can I save Israel? Behold, my clan is the weakest of Manasseh, and I am the least of my father's house. I don't have any time. My life's a mess. I don't have any finances. I don't have the money. I'm the weakest. Yeah, they, Lord, you know my story. And God said, no, go in the strength you have. Well, I have no strength. Yeah, I know. Go in that because I'm going to show up with you. I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to move with you. And the Lord said to him, but I will be with you, and you shall strike the Midianites as one man. And I wanted to share that afresh to us because the Lord has purposes for us even this year. And, and as the, part of the reason we're doing this culture of the kingdom uh, study is to talk about some areas of our home and our worship that I feel like the Lord wants us to dig fresh wells. If, you know, if you've been around me for any length of time, I talk about the wells, right? So to dig some fresh wells in. Because the Lord has purposes for us. Our homes are meant to be the, the tip of the spear of the influence of heaven 
in our communities, and in, in, in people's lives. There are people in your world, they'll never walk into this church, but they'll come to your home for a meal. And it's not that you're just going to break bread and play Scrabble with them. It's that you get to bring them into your home, play Scrabble, but talk to them about Jesus and begin to lead them into the, to the things of God. And we're going to see people's lives forever changed for that. I believe that with all my heart. I say, but Lord, we're just small, we're weak, and all this. yeah. And he's big and he's awesome and he called us to walk that out. Amen? So I want to encourage you, read Judges chapter 6 as kind of Pastor Rick encouraged us to do. Let us not forget that. I think sometimes it's just easy to move on and, uh, and rightly so. But let's just continue to study that out for ourselves. Monica, the Lord is with you, mighty woman of valor. Amen? Amen. But, you know, but Lord, I'm weak, I'm this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go in the strength you have and serve Jesus. Amen? So that's a, chal- that, that, that's a challenge to all of us. So that's kind of part one of the culture this morning. Just to remind us of our times of prayer. Uh, I'll say this on, on, on top of that. Pastor Rick and the pastors, all of us the other day, we got together and we were talking through, um, through the calendar and putting some refresh dates. They're called refresh meetings. They're just meetings of refreshing that we put on the calendar. Some in Potsdam, some in uh, Canton, one here in Augensburg, in Mawira, in Richville. And they're just uh, moments where we can come, worship the Lord, and let the Holy Spirit move and refresh lives. So there, look, check, take a look at the calendar. Maybe you can come, come at one or two. I know for sure that on Friday, April 1st, we have one right here. So let's uh, mark that day uh, and uh, plan to be here that, that night, April Fool's Day. Uh, April Fool's for those who, don't, for those who uh, play that game. Uh, uh, so some people in my family love to play that. They're probably already developing ideas. Anyhow, that's number one. So just, just a reminder us to, to continue to stir up what the Lord's doing and, and be faithful to what the Lord, the Lord brings a word to us to, to, to foster that and keep that. The second thing I want to talk about and, um, and mention is um, in Philippians chapter 4. And uh, Don, if you're, if you're watching, uh, this is uh, one of Don Colbert's uh, favorite, uh, favorite scriptures. But last week, as we were beginning to talk about the culture of the kingdom, one of the thoughts I had in the midst of preaching is, is a, was a kind of a, a challenge to us. I remember I mentioned last week, we talked about, while I was preaching, we talked about uh, how negative, negativity sometimes just pervades North Country culture. You know, it just pervades our minds. It pervades people's thinking. You know, it's like we're grumpy all the time, man. And I and I made a joke last week because I've heard this so many times. Where it'd be a beautiful day, and I say, you know, you're just trying to make small talk with somebody. You know, hey, what a gorgeous day today. Yeah, we'll pay for it later. And maybe right now they think we're paying for it. I don't know. I think today's pretty beautiful as long as I got heat in my house. You know, it's like if I don't have heat, then I can see today being a pretty rough day. Some of you guys have like full jackets on. I saw the Baxters. You guys had like all your jackets during worship. I was like, they came ready for a, for a like, you know, to, to, to like sled with some dogs today. You know what I'm saying? It's like a cold day. Uh, by the way, I saw that and I turned the heat up a little bit. So hopefully, hopefully we're getting there. <laughs> but I realized how it just everywhere you turn, there's just a, it's like a, it's like a, it's, it's just a grumpiness that, that, that's out there, a negativity. And I want to challenge us. That's not the culture of the kingdom, church. That may be a culture of your family. That may be a culture of your mom and dad. That may be a culture of your neighbor. But that's not a culture that we're called to, to walk to as believers. You see, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, Philippians 4, verse 8, it says this, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. If there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Think about those things. Our minds get caught up and, man, our minds can go, the world is filled with negativity. And I'm not saying that we ignore the stuff that's out there. I'm t- what I'm saying is as we think about things, think with the posture of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Don't think, don't think it in a way of, of you being even a, this, of being a victim to the negativity and around you. It's like this, you know, you have a, we, we have kids, we have kids and, and I'm like, man, I'm, you know, like if I'm having a rough day, I'm talking to somebody or talking about kids and yeah, just wait till they're teenagers. You know, it's like always got to find something worse. It's like always got to find something more negative. Well, guess what? I got three teenagers right now and I stink and love them. They're awesome, man. Are they challenging? Well, what, who is, I'm challenging. You know what I'm saying? I, like, we're all challenging, right? 
We all need Jesus. Of course that is. But that's part of the beauty of it. Let's not be negative and, yeah, this and changing diapers again and this and that. And, uh, you know, I don't have to change diapers, though, so I can say that now. I don't change any diapers right now. Not like you, Ryan, you know? <laughs> but sometimes that's where we're at in life. We're in a diaper-changing season. Let's rejoice and be thankful that that's where we're at. Amen? Instead of being, instead of living the, the whatever, whatever is negative or bad or this, think about those things. No, whatever is noble, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is excellent. Hey, let's find something to be praised the Lord about and be thankful for that today. Which does lead us into now the message itself. Last week we dove into, we are talking about different Hebrew words that describe or get translated to the word praise in English. They get translated a few other ways, but you know you have you have seven different Hebrew words that when they bring it to the English, they're like, yeah, you know what, the word praise that'll fit for that one, and that'll fit for that one, and that'll fit for that one. And really, what we have is we have a whole depth of meaning in what these words mean and what praise looks like that we just capture with one with one word praise. And so we come to church and we sing a song, and maybe we felt like we praised. But is it possible that we've missed something in the culture of the kingdom because we've praised in our very static way when God's calling us in a much depth, much more of a deeper way through his scripture to praise the Lord in a beautiful way? Last week we talked about the first word we talked about last week was yada. And it meant translated, it's translated as praise, give thanks, confess. But it means to throw out the hands, to worship with extended hands. Psalm 67, verse 3. This is last week, but I'll just share the scripture. Psalm 67, verse 3. Let the peoples praise or yada you, O God. Let all the peoples praise or yada you. So there we see that word yada. That meant, you know, let all the world extend their hands. Let all the peoples, that includes us, praise the Lord. Then we went to, we talked about another word, uh, the word halal. Halal means to boast, to rave, to shine, to celebrate, to be clamorously foolish. And it's where we get the word hallelujah from. Praise the Lord. By the way, if you weren't here last week, I recommend you, 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 you go online and look it up and listen to the script, listen to the, to the word again. I think it'll really encourage you. But the word halal is found all throughout the Psalms. Very familiar to us. Places like Psalm chapter 150. Um, is this working again? Better to go off. You just went blackout. The next slide. Psalm 150. Verse 6, let everything that has breath praise or halal the Lord. And hallelujah, that's uh, that's praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Be clamorously foolish. Well, today we're going to dive into a few more words that will challenge us, that will stretch us. I mean, as I read these words, they they stretch me. They challenge me. The first word I want to spend some time we're going to look at is the word zamar. Zamar. Zamar means to simply make music, to make music, to celebrate in song and music, to touch the strings or parts of a musical instrument. That's what it means, right? Just to play, just to play music. Psalm chapter 7, verse 17. Psalm 7, 17. I will give thanks to the Lord, and there's the, the, uh, I will give to the Lord the thanks, and that's the word we learned last week, yada. Again, that that extension of the hands and thanksgiving due to his righteousness. And I will sing praise, Zamar, to the name of the Lord, the Most High. You know, music's a a beautiful gift the Lord has given us. And it's all through the Bible. And time and time again, we can see, and we'll look at a few scriptures, where music comes at a moment where breakthrough happens in the spirit. It's really pretty special. And we can study, even if you, if you take the Bible completely out of it, and you just look at, at uh, they've studied music. I mean, people spend a lot, of, you know, like, you know, a lot of money to study the history of music and where music comes from and the benefits of music. Music has a lot of benefits. I was looking at some studies this week. Studies show that people with musical training have better neural encoding of speech sounds, resulting in better detection of speech in noise from childhood through old age. So people that begin to listen to music, children that are exposed and even to musical training, neurons, things happen mentally, like, like physically in their brain, stuff happens when music, when they're around music and they, they give themselves to music. It has, a, it has mental benefits. It has real physical uh, help to our brain. It's amazing what music can do. It has emotional benefits. It has an emotional component to it. Music simply makes people feel good, right? 
But who doesn't like just throwing on a, uh, on a song that just makes you, pumps you up? Last night I was just going to, we had a beautiful night last night at Awake, at the Awake Conference. And I got to speak over there. And uh, about 70 college students, young adults were there. <coughs> Excuse me. It was just a fantastic time. But I was, you know, I was getting pumped up for the meeting. So as I was driving over there by myself, I put on this old P.O.D. Anybody ever listen to P.O.D.? This song, Alive. I, I feel so alive. Oh, my goodness. It was awesome, right? I was, like, driving down the road, like, really pumped. Actually, it was before I drove there. I was on my way home because then Kayla got in the car, and I didn't listen to that uh, when she got in the car. She wouldn't have been as pumped by it, right? But as in a music, like, music has, like, an emotional component. If I ask you, like, what's your favorite song or your favorite artist, you, every one of us, we have, like, music. And maybe today it's like, well, today I'm kind of in this mood. Or today I'm in this mood. It deals with our emotions. I mean, any time I hear, uh, you know, John Denver, Colorado, Rocky Mountain High, right? I can't even go. He goes, like, so high. I, I smile, not because I, I, well, I, I imagine I would love the, the Rocky Mountains, but it's my dad's favorite singer. So when I hear that, it gives me an emotional response that makes me love my dad when I hear John Denver. You know what I mean? Country roads take me home to a place I belong, West Virginia, <laughs> Mountain Mama, and I think it makes me laugh because I love my dad, not because I want to go to West Virginia, and that's no offense if anybody's got West Virginian roots here. But the reality is, we, we, you know, music has, has a component that moves us emotionally. Last year when we went down, uh, the, the, uh, the, some of us to, went to Philadelphia uh, last year for our, our senior class trip. So Philadelphia trip, you go to the steps that Rocky ran, right? So what do you play when you're at the Rocky steps? Ten. Jay, nothing? Do I have any rhythm at all? Okay, yeah, you weren't there, but I was wondering about my rhythm section here. Nothing? No, Jay, yeah, he's like, yeah, bro, just stop it. A little eye of the tiger, right? It pumps the music, music has a way to, to move us, to move us. Music is a social, is a, is, a, is a social thing. It's an experience that we do socially. That's why, like, you know, concerts are so, like, you know, I mean, the amount of money people spend on concerts now. Have you seen some of the concert tickets nowadays? Hundreds of dollars to, to spend uh, to go together and listen to somebody play music that everybody knows, and then people will sing the music that that person's singing. And, but you're, like, there together, and it's like this social experiment around music. People do the same thing with, they don't sing it out loud, I don't think, but, like, with Broadway shows. People go to Broadway shows, and you got this musical theater that's going on, and uh, probably people aren't singing back to it. But it's a social, it's a, it's a social connection point. How many people have ever been to a live concert? Can you tell me who you went with? Can you tell me other people that were there? But for me, I can. Maybe you went by yourself. You're like, I just love that concert by myself. That's fine. But every concert I've ever gone to, I can tell you who was standing next to me. I can tell you, you know, where I was, who was there. It's, there, there. There's a social component to that. We talk about mental. We talk about emotional. We talk about social. But let's, let's understand there is an absolute spiritual component to music. Absolutely. Absolutely. We don't realize the power music can have over us, good or for evil. And maybe if we do know that it has an evil component or it can do something to us then negatively, then why are we letting it into our souls? I remember a, a season when I was younger, um, I, uh, I got into a season where I was just listening to a lot of country music. I'm not against country. I, you know, I, I love it, actually. I, I listened to a lot of it at the time. Like, all the time. And the Lord convicted me. Because you know what? Because Not that there's anything wrong with country music. I mean, there is some of it's wrong. But you know why? Because it was causing me to get depressed. It really was. You know, I lost my dog. I lost my wife. I lost my truck. You know, I don't know. It's like everything. It's like, oh, <laughs> like my life is just so rotten. I don't even own a dog. I don't have a wife. And I don't even have a truck. I'm already losing here. You know what I'm saying? And the Lord was really, really, he really convicted me. He said, Ben, what are you spending your time sowing all those seeds into your mind over? Because I like the music, or I like this singer, or I like this song, or Lord, don't you know this one song just has like a great little message to it? And the reality was it was causing me great, great harm. I know, I, I, I know of somebody that, that uh, um, they, were, uh, they were in a situation where they were tempted to have an affair on their spouse. And there was music that they had had between them and the person. 
that they weren't that they that God that they were not supposed to be with. There was a musical connection that these two people had together. So one day that person's playing that music, and I knew something was wrong. I knew something was up. You can't listen to that music. You can't listen to that. You well. Well, there's nothing wrong with that music. No, it's, it's what it's doing to you. It's having a negative impact in your life. I bet you if I took testimonies in here, you would all share testimonies of when, when music has done something negatively to you spiritually. But in the same way where it's done something negatively, boy, the Lord can do something so amazing with us in the spirit. The Zamar. The Zamar. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 19 actually commands us. It says, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. Here we have the scripture itself telling us to have social interaction with music, and, and the, the, which there's an emotional reaction and a mental reaction and ultimately a spiritual feeding that comes when we build one another up, when we sing to one another, when we address one another with, with music and melody and understanding that the Lord dwells on the praises of his people. That God shows up in those amazing moments, in those awesome moments. I don't have the, the slide or the scripture, but if you have your Bibles in 1 Kings chapter 3, it's a story of three kings, the king of uh, Judah, uh, Jehoshaphat, the king of Israel, and the king of Edom. They were all together, and they were looking for the word of the Lord. So they're trying to find the word of the Lord, and they said, isn't there a prophet among us? And they, somebody said, yeah, there's that guy, Elisha. Let's go get Elisha and make him share the word of the Lord to us. And so Elisha, they go to him and he says to the king of Israel in, in uh, 1 Kings chapter 3, he said, what have I to do with you? Go to the prophets of your father and to the prophets of your mother. Meaning, well, don't come to me for the word of the Lord, you're just using me. And the king of Israel said to him, no, it's the Lord who has called these three kings together to give them into the hand of Moab. And so Elisha says, as the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, and listen to what he says, this is interesting. One of the kings there, Jehoshaphat, uh, Elisha uh, had respect for. He goes, were it not that I had regard for Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would neither look at you nor see you. Elisha said, basically, I wouldn't even be near you right now if this king wasn't here. Anyways, they're asking for a word of the Lord. So it's a moment, okay, you know, let's go. Word of the Lord and go and make it happen. And go, Elisha. So what does Elisha do? Listen to what it says, verse 15. But now bring me a musician. Now bring me a musician. And when the musician played, the hand of the Lord came upon him, and he said, thus says the Lord, and he continued on with his prophetic word. What's the point here? The point is, is that music has a spiritual component to align us in the right place of making melody and making song, it aligns us with the things of the Lord. It aligns us. And, and not only that, we, and as we get aligned with the things of the Lord, it, it advances the, the, the victories of God in, in, in our midst. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Again, you can just write this down. It says that they, uh, they, uh, they, they gathered before the army, these worshipers. And when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set an ambush against the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, so that they were routed. We have this time in Scripture where they literally gathered a worship band, and they had enemies completely defeated, completely eradicated. Through worship, through praise. Don't, don't underestimate the opportunity we come through here. And Ellie leads us in that, in that uh, you know, we sang that song today. What was that first song you sang today, Ellie? Holding nothing back, holding nothing back, or else it's like, yeah, come on, right? Like, we don't understand the power that we have of even aligning our hearts with the Lord and with each other to see the, to see the routing of hell in our lives. The zamar of God, making music, making melody, the word used for praise. The other, another word, I'm gonna, this will be the last word I'll talk about today, and we'll wrap this up next week, is, uh, is the word toda, toda. Todah is very similar to the word yada. It means an extension of the hands. It means thanksgiving, a confession, a sacrifice of praise. But here's a very little interesting nugget about todah that I think for us is an area that we can camp on and rejoice in. It's this, thanksgiving for things not yet received. Thanksgiving for things not yet received. I love that description. And it truly requires faith not to lift hands in victorious celebration yay but to lift hands in victorious expectation yes 
He will do it because my God is not a liar. Amen? My God is the champion. It's in the midst of the challenges and the difficulties that we have that we can raise our hands to celebrate his victory that we have yet to see materialized in our lives. It's, a, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to get people you know, to lift their hands you know, when, when, when there's victory in the air. That's why I love, and next week we're going to talk about the, the Hebrew word Shabbat, which is the, the word that we, uh, we, is about shouting. Shout to the Lord. I love the, the story of Joshua and the walls of Jericho. Because they, they marched around the walls of Jericho, and then what's, what do they have to do? Shout, and the walls will fall down. I'm probably getting ahead of myself for next week's message. But it's this idea of giving thanksgiving for what's about to take place. You know, it's like, yeah! And like kind of opening your eyes like, boy, I really hope that wall falls down. No, man, just praise the Lord. And let him take care of the rest. Offer thanksgiving for things not yet received. The culture of the kingdom is one that believes the promises of the word of God and gives thanks for them in spite of what looks like disarray around us. Praise the Lord that I will and am released from bondage. Praise, thank you God that I will be glorious healed. Praise the Lord that I will be eternally saved from sin. Thank you Jesus that you hear and answer my prayers. Even if the prayers sometimes are no or not what I want you to say. You hear them and you answer them. Lord, thank you Jesus that you never forsake us, never leave us. Thank you, Lord, that this week I have a decision to make on Wednesday this week. And, Lord, I thank you today that you are going to lead me to make a decision that pleases you and honors you this week, Lord. It's looking ahead. It's Thanksgiving that, 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 that worships in spite of everything else. It's not a wait-and-see approach to praise. It's have faith and believe approach to praise. It's praise in light of your future circumstance not necessarily your present ones. It's praise. It's, it's a sacrifice. It's, it's beautiful. It's glorious. Psalm chapter 56, David writes, <clears throat> he's writing that in the beginning of the chapter, they give a little title uh, before this chapter. At the beginning of the title, it says this, To the choir master, according to the dove on the far-off terebinths, a mictum of David, when the Philistines seized him in Gath. So David's writing this psalm while in, you know, captivity, while in this troubled place. And look what he says here in the midst of it. In God I have put my trust. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? we got to continue to just speak that to the Lord. What can man do to me? Vows made to you are binding upon me, O God. I will render praises, toda, to you. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord, in the midst of this trial in the midst of this dark moment, recalling that God is with me. David wrote a lot of these type of uh, psalms. Psalm chapter 42, verse 14, David said this. He said, uh, these things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise, Toda, a multitude-keeping festival. Just no matter where you're at in life, and no matter what situation that you are, you are going to offer thanksgiving. And it is not based on feeling. It is not based on what happened this morning. It's not based on what happened yesterday. It is based on the fact that God keeps his promises. He is good and forever faithful. And for that, I worship you and I thank you and I praise you. I toda you. Acts chapter 16. In the New Testament, we have a, a passage where... Paul and Silas and a group of believers were, were being tracked or followed by this slave girl who was demon-possessed with a spirit of divination. And she would travel behind them, and she actually said things that were quite true. She said, these men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. What she said was true, but there was something really wrong <laughs> with what's going on with inside of her. And at one point, the Bible says, uh, this, she did this for many days, but Paul, he became greatly annoyed. You can see in the beginning, like, yeah, I can tolerate this. Yeah, what she say is not bad. It's just, you know. But boy, after a few days, Paul's like, yeah, I'm kind of tired of this. I'm kind of tired of this thing that's just, it's, it's, a, it's bothering. It's okay to be annoyed. <laughs> Paul was. 
just cast out some demons when that happens. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's do some real spiritual work, right? So Paul says, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her, and it came out that very hour. But then her owners saw that her, their hope of gain was gone. Uh, this, this girl would tell fortunes and, and stuff. They seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers. They brought them to the magistrates. These men are Jews, and they are disturbing our city. Disturb our city. Disturb our city. They advocate customs that are not lawful for us Romans to accept or practice. You know what they're advocating? Some culture of the kingdom, man. Some kingdom culture thoughts and ideas. So the crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates tore the garments off of them, and they gave orders to beat them with rods. And when they inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safely. And having received this order, he put them into the inner prison and fashioned their feet in stocks. So we have this, just this, you know, Paul, you know, you can see him, and like, why did I get so annoyed? I just should have died, you know, maybe I shouldn't have delivered the demon. I don't think he ever thought that at all. They were beaten for it. They were, they were, they were, they were beaten with rods. Anybody ever been hit with a rod? Like a, like a bat? It ain't fun, man. May have been hit with a bat or two. <laughs> it's not a purpose. I was in, we were, in a, I was I just had a, I was in, a, I was coaching a baseball team and uh, we were walking through the gym one day and somebody was warming up and I was walking, I thought far away and their follow through just came and whap with the aluminum bat, hit me right in the face. And, um, yeah, one of my, it's like, hey, somebody put a helmet on that guy. <laughs> one of my many head injuries. Uh, there we go. Anyways, listen what, it, listen what it says. Verse 25, Paul and Silas beaten up, ridiculed, scorned. Now they're in prison. They don't know what's next. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. That's what they were doing. Their response, their response at midnight is to let's worship the Lord. Let's thank God. And the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bonds were unfastened. And the jailer woke up. He saw the prison doors were open. He drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, don't harm yourself. We're all here. He didn't even leave, man. He just stuck around. The jailer called for lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell before Paul and Silas. And then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, you and all your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all who were in his, in his house. So verse 25 there. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. I found it interesting, just some of the, the, prof the, the prophetic exhortation today um, that was being shared um, of, uh, you know, it doesn't matter where you're at or what you're in the midst of. God's there uh, to meet you. God's there. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. And so an encouragement to us is in the middle of whatever fire you're in, praise the Lord. In whatever, whatever challenge you're in, whatever trial you're in, praise the Lord. Be thankful to God. Make music with expectation. Come to church with an expectation of like, Lord, I love you and I thank you that you are my healer. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. And those things. Habakkuk chapter 3, it says this, familiar, but it says, Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the yields and the fields yield no food. The flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, and I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on my high places. Though it seems like devastation around me, yet I will praise the Lord. I will toda the Lord. I will be thankful in the midst of this glorious day. Uh, Ellie, why don't you come on up here? And for a moment here, I'm just a couple takeaways, <laughs> some action steps for us. Number one, I want to say this. Take some time to really discover 
some good, solid, Holy Spirit, life-giving worship and music that you can put on on a regular basis to stir yourself in the things of the Lord. And if you don't have, you know, the, the ability to, to listen to different music, man, just sing some songs. Man, put some stuff before you that just reminds you of Jesus. There's a, there's a singer back in the early 80s that I, that I was a big fan of named Keith Green. And if I want to, like, just get, get plugged into Jesus, I put a little Keith Green on there. My eyes are dry, my faith is old, my heart is hard, my prayers are cold. But I know how I ought to be alive to you, dead to me. Oh, what can be done for an old heart like mine? Soften it up with oil and wine. The oil is you, your spirit of love. Please wash me anew in the wine of your blood. Man, just, just dive in, man. Dive in. What is, if there's songs in your heart, in your mind that have been there for years. Bring them out. I can't sing. I can't. You know, I don't have a nice voice. I don't have a nice voice. I really, I just like to sing. <laughs> like, just do it. Like, just bring it out. Put on some good, solid, you know, little P.O.D., you know what I'm saying, which is, you know, like, you know, I feel so alive in Jesus. Right? Put something on that stirs you towards the Lord. Some of you guys are going to put on P.O.D. later and be like, wait, wait what? My best friend, I, there's some of you that should not, okay? I'm just saying, <laughs> if I'm not recommending it. I just, it inspired me for the Lord. <sighs> so that's number one. Find time this week. Find time this week to really mark some music for your own soul and life in the Lord. Number two, and this is what we're going to do. We're going to do this right here, right now. And we'll worship the Lord. But I would like to give some thanksgiving right now for expectation. I'm going to start. I'm going to start. I've been praying my whole Christian life. I'll be saved next, uh, next uh, year. I'll be, I, w- I will have been saved for 40 years. 80, no, this, uh, this year, 82. This year, 40 years. So we celebrate little anniversaries together. The year I got saved is the year you guys got married. You know? But there's been something I've been praying for for 40 years. And I'm thankful today that my dad's going to find Jesus. I'm just, I'm just trusting the Lord. That's what I am. Amen? I'm thankful, Lord. Even saying that, I'm scared to say it. But Lord, I thank you that my expectation is not in myself or not in, it's in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you that you will save my dad. And I thank you today that you are a savior and that you know all and I don't. But maybe some other people out there, you could share some thanksgiving of expectation you have to the Lord. In front of us, just just maybe anybody that can just say it out. What are you thankful for that you're expecting God, hoping God, asking God for? Thank you, Jesus, for unity in my family. I want to pray for that. Lord, I pray for just miracles. In Jesus' name of unity in Connie's family. In Jesus' name. Someone else. Thank you, Lord, for her to find her life way back to you. Lord, that, you, that she's in the palm of your hands. Lord, I thank you for that word that came today. Lord, that said, and when we fall into sin, you pursue us. Lord, I pray you pursue her, that she find you in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we thank you that you are the Savior. A lot of salvation going on right here. A lot of, you know, it's good stuff, right, that your boys will find Jesus. Amen. Thankful, Lord, that you answer prayers. You hear our prayers. Lord, we're thankful for that to you. Amen. Someone else. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you today. Lord, that your heart is to draw people to yourself. And I thank you today, Lord, for moving in a powerful way in Madrid Waddington High School, in Madrid Waddington Elementary School, and Lord, in the families and the lives of those of those there, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, Julia's coming home, amen. Thank you, Lord. If you spoke that, Lord, we, we trust you. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that the generational curses end here. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
stand to our feet. Ellie, why don't you lead us in a, in, a, in a worship song? And let's just, maybe there's things that are in your heart. It's like, oh, I'm not ready to say this out loud, but you're ready to say it to the Lord. That's good. That's okay. Let's just say it to the Lord. Let's honor him. And let's thank him with hearts of expectation that we can sit here and worship today in victorious celebration and victorious expectation. Amen. God's on the move. It was my cross you bore so I could live in the freedom you died for. And now my life is yours and I will sing of your goodness forevermore. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve things I just feel in my heart as we're just worshiping here is, you know, these things that we're thankful for, and it's, it's, it just shows how tender our worship is to the Lord. And certainly as we share, those are your pearls, and we want to guard that and pray for one another, but 
we need to pray for one another. You know, we need to be standing with one another. One of the areas we can do that is right here at the altar ministry. We have a part of the culture of the kingdom here as we have is if there's a need, man, let's press forward and have somebody lay hands on you and pray for you and stand with you. I want to encourage you, if you're battling something or facing something or you need breakthrough in an area, man, let's, let, let's, let's lean into that and receive prayer for that. But perhaps there's just something of like an expectation on your heart and it's like, I don't know how to deal with this. I don't have to, you know, go to somebody, have, find somebody and say, hey, would you stand with me in this area? I'm thankful to the Lord. I'm going to serve the Lord no matter what. But boy, this, this area, I just, I want somebody to stand with me in this thing, just to pray with me and to, and to walk this together with me, whatever it might be. So find some people. It can be this morning or later on. It, it can be at any point. Just find one another and really lift one another up and build one another up in the things of the Lord. Father, we thank you today. Lord, that you are worthy of praise. And Lord, you draw our hearts, Lord, just to, in the midst of music, just to lift up our voices and lift up a song of praise to you. And Lord, we come today full of thanksgiving. Lord, even though there are things that we look at and say, boy, there's no fruit on the vine. There's no, that, that, that field seems like it's never, ever going to bear fruit. But Lord, we thank you anyways. Lord, that you are good and awesome and you hear our prayers. God, move in supernatural, miraculous ways. Lord, even where we hear this week just testimonies of the move of God, we pray in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. May you go with the grace and the peace of the Lord. Be blessed today. If anyone needs prayer, we're here to pray with you and stand with you. Amen.